We've come to London today to meet with Mark Mirdovnik. Now he's a materials scientist and engineer at University College London. He's a bit of a professor of stuff and he's got a bit of a history with Starlight. He's done tests on it in the past and we're going to ask him what properties Starlight has that makes it so resistant to extreme heat. Oh yeah, here we go. Yeah, this is an exciting moment. My first real test of Starlight in my own lab. I just didn't know what to expect. Well, I really remember seeing Starlight on uh, Tomorrow's World. I mean, it just sticks with you in your head. You know, the, the egg demo was just, I just, it just defies belief in a way, doesn't it? It's a, and you open it up and it's, the egg is <laughs> still, you know, liquid in there. It's incredible that this material just painted on could be so powerful. That really stuck in my head. I knew that Morris had died. I, I thought well, the secret must have gone with him. And, but then uh, his daughters came to the lab and uh, we did some tests. And so I got to see the material with my own eyes. It was a very special moment. So the incredible thing is, A, it doesn't burst into flames. That is in, in itself an incredible thing. But you, you suddenly see this, there's this big, big, thick foam being formed and it's pushing, it's pushing the flame away from the thing you're trying to protect. What is starlight? The starlight is a paint, like a white viscous liquid. Once it's set hard, uh, if you apply a heat, and we applied a blowtorch to it, the material itself chars and becomes carbon, and, it, and that then becomes this expanding foam of carbon. Now carbon is a very high melting point material. It's incredibly thermally resistant. And so you have this, this very low density foam made of a very high temperature resistant material and it happens very quickly. So it's a kind of magic material, it's a thin paint, but then it becomes quite a thick, chunky insulator material. But look at that, I mean, you know, a material that can withstand a blowtorch for that period of time, it's an impressive material. Oh yeah, look, I'm putting my hand on it there and just to see how hot it is, and I can put my hand straight on it. So we just turn the blowtorch out and it's, it's, it, it doesn't burn you. That's a very hard test for any material. Morris's masterstroke of taking Starlight onto Tomorrow's World soon attracted the attention of companies and governments. 18 months after appearing on the programme, the Ministry of Defence convinced the inventor to allow them to run a series of tests. One of the nice points about being in science often, you in fact uh, go down on the beach, you in fact turn over rocks and then suddenly something's underneath those uh, rocks that's quite, quite different. Starlight was very, very different. I was the kind of guy, I guess, that they used to come to and ask, how does this work? What makes it tick, as it were? So I was involved in looking at laser damage issues. Most of the tests that um, I did involved a doubled YAG laser. The pulse length was between five and 10 nanoseconds. What was interesting is it changed only down to the depth that it needed to, to deal with the, the heat pulse that was put on it. The bigger the heat pulse, the better Starlight worked. Initially, he would in fact want to come and uh, be there whilst tests were in fact done. Later on, he, I think, um, gave me uh, samples which he in fact left in my care, provided I could take them back to him afterwards. But he knew that I didn't actually analyse them. The MOD test results showed Starlight was something they hadn't seen before, and now NATO was also interested. It wanted to know if Starlight could withstand a nuclear explosion. Further tests were carried out at the Atomic Weapons Establishment in Foulness in the UK and the White Sands Missile Range in New Mexico. They were effectively thermal tests by um, setting off a large conventional blast. Some of the tests that were, that were done, they used a four kiloton simulant. Is it, is it nuclear blast resistant? It's thermal blast resistant, if it doesn't get torn to bits. How serious was the, the MOD about Starlight? I think we knew at the time that it was a game changer overall, largely because of how well it had uh, worked for, in fact, tests that uh, had been done before I actually was asked to uh, look at it. 
Uh, the test that I in fact did also indicated that it was, it was, it was better than anything else that I'd in fact seen. Mm -hmm.